Good morning. Welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. We appreciate your tuning in to the channel. So uh, we want to bring you an update on the events going on here in Ecuador, the emergency situation. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of it on the local news where you live. Um, some stuff is misrepresented, misreported, uh, because information in this country is just a little tough to get get your hands on. Well, it was really, they really haven't had this type of thing in probably a really, really long time. Um, but people didn't know what to expect, so there was a lot of panic and a lot of fear. Yeah, and let me just say, this is uncharted territory for us, so um, we've seen things go awry in other countries very quickly, and American citizens being held captive and things like that in the past. So we want to, you know, caution everybody to take the right protections and, and cautions and make sure that they're safe. So um, we just never know what's going to happen when something like this happens. It's all new for us. So we uh, made some recommendations about not traveling here. We stay, uh, stick to those recommendations. Yep, for now. And, and uh, probably, you know, in the next few days, we would say, yeah, go ahead, travel freely. There were some folks who contacted us. They were already on the way here. Um, and some of them arrived at their hotel, didn't even know anything was going on until they happened to look at the news. Right. So um, everything is here where we live, safe as can be. We're safe here in Vilcabamba. We've had no no events happen here that I know of. Mm -hmm. I was told that a car bomb did happen in Malacatos. A small bomb was placed in the car and the car burned to the ground. I can't confirm that via the police or local media or anything, but yeah. um, but that's what was told to me. Most of this was happening at the coast and in um, Quito. There were some problems at our prison in Loja, I believe. Well, there were six prisons that once the um, emergency decree was declared, six prisons kind of went haywire. And I believe they um, have taken 130 hostages between those six prisoners or six prisons um, in different provinces, Loja being one of them. So, and there have been, I mean, they're really doing a great job. They're... Uh, the police, the national police, the military um, have really cracked down. So the first night, I think we saw a video in Cuenca. And like the first night of the lockdown, the streets were bare. I mean, nothing was happening. But. And we, we I mean, we really want to commend President Naboa mm -hmm. for issuing the emergency order and getting right on this as he should have. Um, and we thank the, the military police and the military everybody for um, for going out there and risking their lives to get these guys under control. And they are. There's a lot of, uh, the gangs have a lot of firepower. So, uh, and they're going into their territory. So um, they don't know what to expect when they get there. They know that it's very dangerous. And so that, yeah, that's kind of where they're, they're attacking them at home. And let me just say, we use the terms gang, cartel, and terrorists interchangeably here sure. because in my opinion what happened was a terrorist act against the people of Ecuador and should be dealt with as such. Um, terrorism carries a pretty heavy sentence here in Ecuador, mm -hmm. heavy as our sentences get here. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, this is pretty amazing and um, I think the, the response is fitting. Naboa issued a shoot to kill order, um, essentially what you'd call a shoot to kill order. And so I think that that was um, the right thing to do, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, we try to stay out of the political issues, but uh, when something like this happens, you've got to protect the people. You do, and that's really his primary focus, and all of the military is not only making it safer for them to do business, but for the citizens of Ecuador as well. Um, so basically, over the first night was when most of the attacks happened, first night, first day. Um, after that, it's been pretty quiet. So what's happened with the lockdowns is there have been over 300 arrests. They focused on three gangs in five different coastal provinces. Um, two policemen have passed away during those, uh, those raids. Um, one of the houses of one of the lead gang members evidently was burned to the ground. Um, there were 
in, in the people that have been arrested, there are 28 escaped inmates that were captured or recaptured. Um, they have also seized weapons, ammunition, cars, cash, and drugs. Um, so there, this is a full-scale attack on, you know, from the military and the, the police on the gang members. But like I said, they still have 130 hostages in those prisons that they're still negotiating and, and have not yet gotten those released. Yeah, so that's the latest information that we have. <clears throat> we do feel safe. We, uh, there are people traveling back and forth to Loja uh, yesterday afternoon and today. So mm -hmm. I think it's probably safe. I still would not be out at night. Uh, the 11 to, you know, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew is still in effect. Yeah. And I guess we'll be for 60 days. Yeah, they went for 60 days. And I think just for 60 days, I guess that's when they're going to focus on going after the gang members. They're trying to, these cartel leaders that escaped from prison, they're trying to round them up. Mm -hmm. So that's why they've tried to lock down the highways and uh, try to prevent these guys from leaving the country. Um, and I think they want to scoop them back up, put them back where they belong. And um, I support that. Yeah. It says they've captured, recaptured 28 that have escaped. They did not talk about the two leaders that had escaped. So I guess they're still at large. Yeah, that's what we have to assume uh, until we hear anything further. I mean, yeah. if somebody has better information, please give it to us. Yeah. Um, and I want to say a, a couple of things. Our last video was probably our most watched video ever in terms of, of the amount of hours it was up and how many views we got. Mm -hmm. We didn't put that up there so we'd get views. We put it up there legitimately to let people know what's going on here. Um, it really kind of angers us when people want to portray Ecuador as this horrible place and their country, primarily the U.S., as this wonderful utopia. The U.S. is not. And we're not anti-U.S. No. But please, um, you know, if, if we say something that's upsetting to you about the U.S., don't call us names in the comments. Don't tell us we're right-wing extremists and things like that. We're going to make sure that you don't get back on our channel if you do things like that. Start your own channel if you want to um, produce hateful comment. Let me just say that. I, I will say we don't delete a lot of comments, but if you make a comment and you're picking a fight or you make a comment and you're being um, really rude and ugly to people, and it doesn't have to be us because we've had them against other people. Um, we're not going to leave those comments on there. Our channel is not about being rude and ugly to people. I mean, people have a right to opinions. And we, as, a, as humanity, as a whole, we need to respect people's opinions and not think that our opinion is the only one that matters. Yes, and I think, you know, I mean, this is our channel. We are going to express our opinions no matter what people think. Yeah. Um, we, we hope that you won't be terribly offended, but maybe some people do need to be offended. Um, we are, um, we were offended when we first moved here and we heard some of the Americans here, you know, kind of dog in the U.S. And, you know, I'm very patriotic flag waving American. And so... Um, some of those comments offended me, but the longer I'm here, the more I realize why they make those comments. And my eyes have been opened significantly. Yeah. Um, and so that's why we make the comments that we make. If it upsets you, I apologize. But at the same time, maybe you need to look a little deeper at why that upsets you. And so um, when we get these comments also that are really anti-American, we delete those as well. Um, this isn't about pro-American, anti-American, pro-Ecuadorian. No. It's about pro-people, and people here in Ecuador deserve the right to protect this country, and we support the Ecuadorians in that effort. Yep. Okay, so that's our update. Uh, when we get more information, I guess we'll give you another update. But right now, um, I mean, we're living life as usual, and, um, you know, I'll be going to town today. Uh, I'm not afraid to move around. I, I do not want to travel like to the coast. That would be a bad idea, I think. Yeah. Um, and I've said before, like in the last video, I'd stay away from Guayaquil for a while. 
Waikil has some significant crime problems. I, this is a great opportunity for the president to really get in there and wipe this out once and for all. And I hope that they can do it. I hope that they'll maintain the support of the uh, Ecuadorian, um, what are they called? The legislature here is called the, uh, oh well, whatever it is. Um, as long as the Ecuadorian politicians will stand behind them in this, and it looks to me like they are, um, but if they'll continue to do that, they maybe can get a handle on all this and get it stopped once and for all. Um, other countries have been able to do that. Colombia's made great progress mm -hmm. over there. Uh, there's still some problems, and El Salvador's made some some real progress. Significant uh, progress. I'll, I'll say, you know, you can't give up liberty for safety. So El Salvador, I'm afraid, has done that. They've compromised their con constitution to be able to do that, and I, I've got issues with that. But I think Ecuador is smart enough not to do that and can still take care of the problem without compromising people's liberty so much. All right, that's all we have for today. Nothing else? Nada. That's it. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Ciao for now.